Hey guys, it's Bang from our PC Gaming here. AMD have finally released their Enthusiast graphics cards for Radeon RX Vega. This will come in three flavors, and you'll be able to get this from the Radeon RX Vega 56. This is going to be the slightly cut down version, and it will be going up pretty much against the GTX 1070. And that's going to start at uh, 399 US dollars. Then moves up to the RX Vega 64. This is the full Vega 10 um, with the, the full specs, just with a slightly lower um, clock speed than the Frontier Edition. So the boost clock will be a little bit lower and the TDP will actually be 295 watts as well. This is gonna start from 499 US dollars. So pretty much right in line with the GTX 1080. So they're, they're very, very equal in pricing. They will be releasing a premium edition above that, which will go independently for 500 and 50 US dollars but AMD is also going to be selling it as a package which you get I think Wolfenstein 2 and Prey and um, that will go for 600 US dollars as well and ultimately they have the water cooled card this will have a higher TDP but also have a higher clock speed I think a maximum boost of uh, 677 megahertz that will go for 699 US dollars so that's a uh, you know, entering the realm of GTX 1080 Ti prices at that point. Um, as you can see with this slide, um, this is based on uh, 3440 by 1440 ultra wide resolution. AMD have put together an average performance across the board against the Fury X, GTX 980 Ti, and 1080. So the Vega 64, um, with games such as Ashes of the Singularity, Battlefield 1, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Doom, Forza, Gears of War 4, Hitman, Sniper Elite 4 and Total War, Warhammer. You can expect the RX Vega to have around a minimum of 53 frames per second to an average of 76 frames per second. While the GTX 1080 will come in at around 45 frames per second as a minimum and 78 frames per second as an average. So. These two cards are definitely going to be trading blows, that's for sure. RX Vega doesn't seem to be um, positioned against the GTX 1080 Ti and, and that's what we're, we've been seeing for a very, very long time. Ever since um, January, I believe, when AMD made that Doom demo and I had a look at it and I saw it was getting figures that the GTX 1080 could produce and at that point in time, it kind of raised a few red flags for me and it would appear that um, these two cards are going to be positioned against each other and they're definitely priced accordingly to do that. Now I think the card looks great in terms of aesthetics, the premium design anyway, that um, aluminium shroud with the illuminated um, Vega logo and um, you know the, the branding at the top looks pretty cool. The back plate comes with it as well so that's nice to see. AMD do make a good argument as well when it comes to marketing this against uh, the FreeSync and G-Sync um, cards. So if you have a look at FreeSync and G-Sync prices, you will save yourself an average around 300 US dollars um, in terms of pairing a Vega RX 64 card um, with a FreeSync monitor versus like a GTX 1080 and a G-Sync monitor at this resolution. So G-Sync is pretty extortionate in that in that sense so it's it's not a bad move by AMD to kind of show the strengths of RX Vega like that and the combination of a complete gaming experience I personally and, and many others may feel that it's a bit underwhelming I mean you know you want to see um, a new king you want to see um, technology move forward so for AMD's best efforts to come below N Nvidia um, despite being coming to market later is is underwhelming for some, not for all, because the GTX 1080 is still a good performing card. That kind of performance is it's still very, very good for a lot of people. And um, the, you know, spending around 700 on a on a graphics card is not not something a lot of people do anyway. So it's not a big deal for AMD. Another thing is it uses more power. Generally, that might be a, an issue for some people if they have to change out their their uh, power supply units. And um, one good thing I'll say is it keeps miners away, um, so that shouldn't really see too many inflated prices due to the high power consumption from Vega. And secondly, just the time it took to get here, I think um, a lot of people got a bit fed up and, and just bought the best they could available at the time because it took so long to get here. Adding board partner um, versions like the Strix and uh, MSI Gaming X versions, they won't be available until September. You'll have to make do with the stock 
499 version from the get-go this will be available sometime in august but um no one's really giving us a precise date on that so that's pretty much it in terms of what i think and um in my thoughts on rx vega at this point in time obviously independent um, reviewers will get their hands on the card and be off the bench it more thoroughly these are uh, internal figures from amd and you always have to take internal figures and internal testing with a grain of salt and uh, we'll see how vega performs and and vega 56 as well that's the one i'm a bit more interested in at this time because if that's faster than the 1070 and not too um slower than the 1080 and um that could be the new bang for buck card really so I'm, I'm gonna have a look at that when that comes out but apart from that guys that's pretty much been it for me just leave your comments and thoughts in the comment section and i'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching